Hello and welcome back to our channel where we cover three new travel destinations every week. Today we will cover the top 10 attractions in Porto, Portugal's second largest and one of the top cities to visit. Whether you stroll around the city or explore it by tram, you will undoubtedly be impressed by its unique architecture. Louis the First Bridge One of Porto's most famous landmarks is the magnificent Dom Louis the First Bridge. The bridge's enormous length and two-tiered design, which spans the vast river Douro to connect Porto with Via Nova di Gaia from a crucial part of the strong social fabric of the country. This bridge is the most well-known among the numerous bridges that cross the Douro River. It was created in 1886 by engineer Teofile Serik, who collaborated with Gustav Eiffel. The upper and lower decks of the enormous iron bridge supported vehicle traffic until 2003, after which the top section was modified to make room for a light rail system. To appreciate the breathtaking views of the surroundings, pedestrians can cross the bridge using narrow sidewalks on either side of the road. Clerigos Tower The Clerigos Tower, also commonly known as Igreja dos Clerigos, or Church of the Clergy, is an 18th century marvel and a beautiful example of Baroque extravagance. The majestic Clerigos Tower stands out against Porto's background skyline like a colossal needle. This prominent landmark in Portugal was built in 1754 and was designed by Italian architect Nicolau Nassoni. The elegant tower is among the tallest buildings in northern Portugal and around 250 feet high and continues to be the main attraction in the city, whether during the day or at night. You can enjoy the city's magnificent 360-degree views from the summit because of its prominent location, but you'll have to climb 225 stairs to get there. However, the scenery makes it all worthwhile, and it should definitely be included in your list of things to do in Porto. Another plus is that after climbing the stairs, you can also enjoy a delicious meal in nearby restaurants, mainly the Hard Rock Cafe. Villa Nova de Gaia Villa Nova de Gaia is a captivating distraction in Porto due to its extensive lengthy promenade and riverbank setting. The town's beautifully planted seafront is easily accessible on foot by crossing the Ponte di Dom Louis I and is surrounded by a long row of chic eateries and coffee shops. Additionally, it serves as the starting point for many Douro River cruise ships. The port wine cellars, warehouses for the renowned port wine, are the most visited tour destination in Gaia. Due to its perfect climate and location for wine aging, Merchants decided to move there and have the vaults constructed in 1710. You can enjoy a ride on the Teleferico de Gaia or cable car for a stunning view. This innovative new tourist destination connects the upper station, which is closest to the Mosteiro da Serra do Pila, with the eastern part of the promenade along the banks of the Gaia River. Mercado de Balhau Mercado de Balhau or Balhau Market known as the city's heart, is where the true spirit of the town can be found. And right at this place, you'll run into the most interesting people. It was founded in 1839 when the town hall acquired the land on which the current market is located and designated the area as a market. The bazaar was separated into two floors when the existing neoclassical structure was constructed in 1914. Later, it was closed for some renovation, and a temporary market was set up in its place. Around a sizable central courtyard, the market's multiple floors are crowded with farmers and locals selling fresh vegetables and regional specialities. The building's deteriorating exterior adds to its appeal and has become one of Porto's most recognizable landmarks. A good starting point for learning about the daily lives of the people who live in the charming city of Porto is undoubtedly Mercado do Bolhau. Ribeira Square Ribeira, a famous medieval neighborhood next to the Douro River, must be visited if you're in Porto. This area of the old city near the Douro is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Riverside District is a fascinating maze of low-slung, sun-starved arcades, zigzagging passageways, and tight winding streets. This is a well-liked place in the city for unwinding and socializing due to the abundance of eateries and cafes beneath the arches along the riverbank. Additionally, it serves as the starting point for river excursions and boat trips to Via Nova de Gaia's port wine cellars. The Gaia's de Ribera allows simple access to Dom Louis Bridge 
for individuals commuting by foot or by car. The Rivera is an adventure filled with flavor and color, with terraces of grand mansions painted in vivid yellow, citrus, and golden hues. Douro Valley, Portugal. The Douro Valley, 100 kilometers from Porto, a renowned coastal city, is a must see wine destination for those who enjoy occasional sips. Of course, the vineyard in this verdant valley are one of the main reasons you should include it on your schedule. The Douro Valley is renowned for being the world's first clearly defined wine growing zone. And in 2001, a significant portion of it was added to the UNESCO World Heritage List. Moreover, this valley offers you a unique road trip or trekking experience. The best way to explore the area's magnificent landscape is on foot. Whether you take walks through the vineyards and olive groves or more challenging treks up to spectacular overlooks like Casal de Loivos. Furthermore, while the seafood in Portugal's coastal cities may be world famous, non-coastal areas like the Douro Valley also have some delectable delicacies, including the famous desert Pastel de Nada. Miradouro da Vitoria The viewpoint of Miradouro da Vitoria in Porto is frequently underestimated. It gives the impression that the tourist boom has not yet reached the area because of its rustic environment. However, it is a place not to be missed. At dusk when landmarks like the Ponte Dom Louis First Bridge and Villa Nova de Gaia are flooded with lights, it becomes a very picturesque location. It has been listed as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO since 1996, from Se do Porto along the Rio Douro to Ribera and Caes de Gaia. Miradoro da Vitoria offers a magnificent panoramic view. How does Miradoro di Vitoria look? Well, the land is sandy and there is a single tree in the center of the square. Although it doesn't sparkle brightly like the majority of Porto's conserved sections, it shines with sincerity. Avenida dos Aliados Since Avenida dos Aliados is frequently referred to as the city's core, it is also Porto's grandest avenue. The main thoroughfare's name translates to Avenue of the Allies, which relates to the 14th century contact between Portugal and the United Kingdom. The avenue, highlighted by the town hall or Camara Municipal, is surrounded by elaborate antique structures and has a lawn and trees in the middle. Walking through this wide double avenue will give you a positive and exciting perspective of Porto. It is also home to several banks and some of the city's most famous hotels. The extravagant artistic flourishes that erupt from the facades and roofs of practically every structure as you move down the avenida will leave you speechless. Porto Cathedral Exploring Porto's say or cathedral, the most significant church in the city, should always be part of any sightseeing itinerary. It is a national monument constructed in the 12th and 13th centuries. Close to the cathedral is a lovely medieval tower from the 13th century. The cathedral is a 12th century Roman architectural building. Bishop Hugh, a French aristocrat who arrived in Porto long before Portugal gained its freedom, built it as he ruled the city from 1113 until 1136. Despite having Romanesque roots, Say has seen numerous architectural changes over the years, which add to its beauty. Spend some time here and take in the serene setting and medieval atmosphere. Foz The history of Porto is alive and well in the streets of Foz, where the Douro meet the Atlantic. Foz is considered to be a tiny city with Porto. It serves as a coastal vacation destination for wealthy Porto locals and Britons in the 19th century. But you can visit it now for its gorgeous beaches, seaside-style outdoor cafes, tucked away among the rocks, or a sunny stroll down the avenida with the Atlantic Ocean panorama. The endless promenades here stretch into the distance, competing for your attention with a vast collection of wonderful eateries while the ruins of fortification shield the flowing water. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely watch the next trending destination. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below what was your favorite place. See you next time.